Linnell Titus Jr. is my middle child. He was 16 years old and two weeks when he left this earth. Anthony, Anthony Titus, he was, he was like a role model to a lot of people. He was a skateboarder, um, a hockey player, a football player. He did some babysitting and some lawn care to make some money. He always wanted to look good. It was always about being fly. Uh, his nickname in our neighborhood was Prince Charming because my name is Princess and his sister's name is Princess Anne. So he went by Prince Charming and all the girls loved him. Before he died, I told him, I'm like, man, bro, you just so cool. Why are you so cool? Like, what make you think you can be this cool? I'm like, man, bro, he's like, yeah, bro, you know, you just gotta get on your swag. That's all he kept saying. He's like, you need to get some swag, bro. You ain't got no swag. He was just the coolest, weirdest kid you could ever, ever meet. But he had a really big heart and he had a really big smile. But when I watch the fireworks fill up the sky, I feel the pain build up inside. I used to have a ball every 4th of July, but not every 4th of the month. 4th of July 2010 was a day that changed our family. I won't say it's good or bad, but definitely changed our family. Somebody's phone rang and they answered it and they said, what? Fat Fat got shot. I jumped in my car and I said the serenity prayer over and over and over and over and over again. And when I got to the location, I was able to follow the yellow tape and get to the end of the yellow tape and see where um, the detectives were looking. And I was able to see it's where his body was. And it was in. Lost my brother on the 4th of July. 4th of July, I made, uh, that was a, that was tough. It was hard to make that song. It was really hard. Huh? It's a deep song, and I made it for everybody to listen to it and, and grieve. Like, that was my grieving process because I didn't know how to grieve. Anthony was told by my husband, Tyrone, that he needed a state ID. So when he was at the licensing place, he called me and he's like, Mom, what's a donor? And I'm like, a donor, um, a donor. Yeah, okay, a donor. That's like when you dedicate parts of your body to be used after you've passed away. And he's like, so are hot, um, are hot girls in med school gonna be looking at my body? And I'm like, you won't know. <laughs> and we got off the phone and we never talked about it again. But after he passed away, that was really the way that I found out that it was my son, is that I got a call and she said, we have your son's donations and we'd like to ask you some questions. When my mom told me like, yay, he saved 54 people. My brother was dead and still was able to help people. Like that's official. Like a lot of people, you, they die and then you, 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 you never hear about them again. They don't live on. So that's why it's long live my brother and you know he lives on through other people because he got to help people. So that's official. I never really knew it was gonna have an impact like that. I never knew that there was other things that you could donate other than your vital organs. I never knew that donations could be used that much. I never knew that out of whatever um, donations they take that it would go as far as 54 people across 14 states from young to really, really old. So just knowing that he's like living parts of him, parts of the part that I miss of him is living in a whole bunch of people that I don't know that I can maybe get to know one day. It gives it purpose.